partner in grime, Michael Paparin and I met when he was on the same waste board and I was doing trash talk. Huh. And I'm glad uh, we've somehow both gone from garbage to global warming. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I had the opportunity, I was in the blue zone. I was one of the, uh, there were about 40,000 people in this, in this uh, area where you needed accreditation. Uh, I'm on the board of a small environmental uh, think tank, the Inter-Environment Institute, we were accredited, so I was able to get uh, into the uh, facility. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of my experiences there. Um, this was the climate reality, it says, I am with climate reality at the climate COP21. That was climate reality had actually in the green zone, uh, a little blue. Um, and Al Gore was everywhere. There were several people who were everywhere. Actually, a lot of people who were everywhere. Um, but um, as was mentioned previously, there was this uh, kind of cloud over the uh, talks as they started. And it was uh, the attacks on Paris uh, shortly before. Uh, this is the Vatican. Uh, there were uh, several locations in Paris where there were makeshift <coughs> memorials to the people who perished. Uh, this. Boy, I can almost, I still tear up thinking about it. Uh, this is a woman, uh, the bicycle of a woman who perished at the Bataclan. The bicycle is never going to be ridden again. This was uh, one of many of the memorials across the street there. So as we went into the um, uh, COP21, there was this hanging over, and then uh, the question about whether there would be really light at the end. Um, so um, this, uh, Lauren Fabius, some of us will remember Lauren Fabius. Uh, the French diplomats, the American diplomats, a lot of diplomats really uh, deserve a lot of credit for what came out of COP21. He uh, was the prime minister of France, if you remember when the Rainbow Warrior, the Greenpeace boat was sunk uh, in New Zealand in the 1980s. He was the prime minister at the time and now he is uh, an environmental champion and someone who really deserves a lot of credit. Um, he says this is about security and peace, this is a chaotic world and a dangerous one. The Paris Agreement is making the world safer. So, um, to me, uh, participating there, it was it was it was my Woodstock moment. This was the Woodstock of the environment for me. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna uh, go through uh, who I consider some of the musicians in a minute here. People uh, speaking uh, to me through their words, singing to me through their words. Uh, some of the messages about climate. Uh, but before I do, um, there were. Um, a lot of messages trying to get them. This was don't duck adaptation. These were little little duckies that were made by, uh, and this is mine. I almost brought it with me. Um, don't duck adaptation. A message from the children of Paris. So there's a lot of ways people were trying to get their messages across. There was a fast for hunger uh, around the world. Participants uh, were there. These were um, uh, natives from uh, Panama presenting to Christiana Figueres a paddle. Uh, let's paddle in the same direction. Um, these were uh, a part of a youth group called Climates from France, uh, although many of the youth were there, I'll get uh, more of the youth in a minute. Uh, little Circles Zero Carbon uh, Emissions by 2050 was their message. Uh, chocolate, people handed out chocolate uh, to get their message across. So uh, what really impressed me almost more than anything was the youth that were there. Uh, and if you think about it, James Hansen started in the 1980s with his messages, and that's when the world really got the message that this thing is real, we've got to do something about it. The youth that were there weren't even born when that message started, yet uh, they're willing to take up the uh, charge. This is uh, Timothy Damon, uh, Sustain U.S. Youth Group. Uh, it's our future. We should be more than observers. And in fact, I think they were. Uh, the youth really made a difference. Uh, within delegations of countries and through uh, some of their activities and actions. Uh, Diana J, young people don't get stuck in the uh, realm of politically possible, but amplify what is scientifically necessary and morally just when it comes to action on climate change. Um, Carolyn Engel, Sierra Club Super Coalition, the road doesn't end in Paris. I'll come back to that message in a minute. Jessica Olson, also from Sierra Student Coalition, our successes show that when we come together and work for what's right, we can change the world. And that's kind of uh, the sort of message that gives me a lot of hope. Well, there are a lot of uh, people talking about the impacts of climate change, a lot of uh, scientists telling us the latest information. 
Deb Markowitz, Vermont Natural Resources Secretary. I can grow peppers and artichokes in Vermont now. That's bizarre. Um, and I think that kind of summarized, in some ways, uh, some of the uh, thoughts that some of us have. But then they got more serious as well. People from the South Pacific Islands. This is the Prime Minister of the Cook Islands saying, we are very, very fragile. This is not an academic issue for the Pacific Island countries. This is real life. It is a matter of life and death for us. And truly it is, because they may lose their country, as uh, some other countries in the uh, uh, Pacific may lose. This is um, a government official from the Philippines. The Philippines must take action to be able to cope, mitigate, adapt, and survive these effects of climate change. Um, Scientists and others, uh, Naomi Klein, how we get off fossil fuels is a question for all of us. Um, I attended a session at UNESCO with uh, members of the IPCC uh, making their, some of their latest uh, information presentations. Uh, we have the means to limit climate change. The time of action is crucial. And that was a message that uh, we've been getting from scientists since the 1980s and that we continue to get from scientists. But the scientists at times can be very frustrated. And I thought that she really summed it up best. Scientists are not poets. And the message there being, we're trying to tell you something, but we don't know how to say it in poetic language, but we need to get it. Um, Dr. Borsatz from the um, uh, Central European University it is possible but extremely difficult to limit change to two degrees. And we're talking about trying to limit it to 1.5 now. Um, James Hansen, the same talk that was mentioned previously. There's more warming than in the pipeline without any additional gases. And that's going to take us into dangerous territory. Similarly, of, of a scientist from Woods Hole talking about the carbon losses from um, thawing permafrost. Um, uh, aren't even taken into account in a lot of the models there. So there's, there's reasons for concern, there's reasons for big concern, but there's also reasons for a lot of hope. Uh, this was, uh, you can see these little trees here. Those aren't trees, those are actually windmills. Mm -hmm. To me it was a piece of art. This was uh, between the blue zone and the green zone, and these things would spin around. The whole thing turned. Yeah, the, not the whole thing. The, these the things look like leaves. leaves. They were the, yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Uh, that was an electric bus to take you to the uh, one of, uh, between one of the uh, uh, venues. Christiana Figueres, uh, boy, I hope she gets a lot of recognition for the work that she's done. Uh, COP21 moved us from despair to hope, from animosity to collaboration, to an understanding that there was a collective responsibility for the future. Jerry Brown was everywhere, <laughs> and what he said a lot. Uh, pretty soon the whole world will be on the right track. This is when he was uh, speaking in the China Pavilion. Uh, there were about 30 to 40 meeting rooms uh, in the blue zone, plus about 40 countries had their own meeting facilities. Right. And things were going on in every location simultaneously all day long. Uh, at the, at a, one minute? Okay, I'll race through a few. Uh, you know Sally Bingham, we can save energy, save money, and save creation. I got the chance to meet Catherine Hayhoe. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was even there. Um, uh, Elizabeth Bay, uh, Green Party Canada, the only Green Party member of Parliament, and got to be part of their delegation thanks to their new uh, Prime Minister. It's not a perfect agreement, but thank God we got it. Uh, Bianca Jagger, the next step after Paris, must be to ensure that the promises made by the world leaders are fully implemented and complied with. Uh, what is it about the Jagger women? Um, what's her name? Um, Elizabeth Jerry, Hall. Jerry, uh, Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall. Yeah. Jerry Hall. Thank you. Uh, is going to marry uh, Rupert Murdoch, and she's a big climate oh. change. Yeah. That's going to be bizarre, huh? Maybe you we'll get interview some, there. We'll get some reality. Our job is to make sure the next president is a climate champion, not a climate denier, yeah. says uh, Gene Karpinski, the League of Conservation Voters. Uh, locals, uh, Tom Butts from Richmond, uh, talking about all the local issues being incredi incredibly ephemeral compared to climate change. Uh, Libby Shep, well, she was a kid, she was everywhere, um, uh, talking about local government actions on climate change. Uh, May Bev, 350.org, we're finally starting to tip the balance between fossil fuel company power and the power of the people. 
And then finally, my last slide, I couldn't resist bringing in Ken Berlin. Um, now it is the time, Ken doesn't speak in short sentences. Uh, now it is the time to take the next step, the step that focuses on upholding the commitments we made in Paris and consecrates on long-term plans and long-term solutions to halt the destructive progression of climate change and ensure a sustainable future for all of us. A lot of words, but I think that's the message that we're going to be talking about in a few minutes about where we go from here. Great. Thank you, Michael.